Okay, everyone. I'm gonna give you another minute. Let's kind of quiet down, take our seats. We've got four more fantastic startups that are gonna be pitching to our judges. I want you to hear them. I want you to hear the judges' questions. So everyone just kind of take your seats, get settled. I'll give us a minute. Okay, let's keep this thing moving along. We want to keep it on schedule and on time. Welcome back to the Dell for Startup South by Southwest pitch competition. I'm Lauren Petrowski, your MC. Thrilled to be here with all of you. And thank you to everyone who came out, braved our ugly weather today for the Dell experience. I think we're waiting on one judge. Mark. So I'm gonna give him another minute. Um, let's give a round of applause to our first four startups. It takes a lot to get up here in front of this panel of judges and talk about your company and really try to sell it. But we're seeing the potential for growth in all the teams that have pitched so far and I cannot wait to hear from these next four. So once again, each team will have five minutes for their pitch, and then the judges will get five minutes for Q&A. After that, the judges will deliberate. We'll take another moment, we'll take a break, and then we will announce the winner shortly after that. Okay, are we ready for our next startup? <laughs> judges, everyone good? Okay. I'm excited to bring up Mark McCann from Step Outside. He will be talking about taking teams into new environments. Mark, come on up. All right, so my slides are out of order because I updated them late and I'm gonna adapt. And you're gonna see why that's relevant in a half a second. So my name is Mark McCann. I'm the founder and CEO of Step Outside. We envision a world where people can adapt to meet the needs of each moment. To get there, we design outdoor experiences that provide the emotional skills that individuals need to do more inspired work. And here's the adapting. There is a collective recognition during the pandemic that one, life exists outside of work, and two, companies run on human connection. In fast-paced environments, the ability to strengthen, maintain, and repair relationships will make or break an organization. Ultimately, Leaders and team, uh, ultimately leaders either hire for these skills or train for them. A 2019 report shows that less than half of companies currently screen for these traits, and even fewer provide follow-up training and support to develop emotional skills despite rampant disengagement. Add the great resignation to that mix, and we've got a situation where businesses are bleeding cash. Thankfully, it doesn't have to be that way. Right now, employees are looking for ways to integrate their life with work, and we provide organizations a path to do that. Step Outside's programs are strength-based and collaborative, and they're designed to re-engage individuals while improving teams. First, we introduce an environment to disrupt the habits and routines that block meaningful work. From there, we use a proven method to build emotional intelligence and practice those skills through experiential outdoor activities. Unlike office-based lectures, we provide a more dynamic learning environment and follow-up coaching to help teams integrate these skills professionally and personally. 
and all of our workshops are challenged by choice, so individuals always decide how and whether they'd like to participate. The model we use is acceptance and commitment training, which has been proven effective across hundreds of studies over the past 30 years. ACT helps individuals build willingness toward difficulty, bring awareness to the current moment, and to take values-driven action. Together, these skills help teams adapt in changing circumstances. By focusing on purpose and values at the individual level and trust and dependability at the team level, we help companies create a stronger foundation for increasing employee retention and satisfaction. And now I'm gonna go backwards. In case that brings any ideas to mind, we're not a ropes course, we don't do trust falls or deliver motivational corporate lectures. Instead, we take teams into new environments to participate in activities that encourage greater self-awareness through physical movement. Think hiking, yoga, climbing, kayaking. We then pair those activities with curriculum based in emotion and behavioral science to help individuals better understand themselves and how they interact within groups. The idea for Step Outside grew out of my time in the classroom. The community I taught in was heavily impacted by trauma, and it was there that I realized how many of us need more effective tools to navigate our experiences. At the time, I didn't have those skills, so I spent several years researching and practicing evidence-based methods to heal myself while transitioning into a role in a high-growth startup. In the startup role, I realized that many of the skills I was developing personally were also key ingredients to building highly effective, engaged, and collaborative teams. At this point, I've spent the last decade training, coaching, and leading teams. At this, uh, yeah, and within that, I've spent, uh, I've trained over 10,000 teachers and leaders and scaled two customer-facing teams at No Red Inc. And now we're jumping ahead. Cool, so in Austin currently, uh, startups and mid-sized companies are losing over a billion dollars annually to turnover and disengagement. We're currently focused on companies with employees between 20 and 500, um, and specifically those in a high growth phase. Once we establish ourselves here in Austin, we'll expand into other strategic markets by hiring a team of contract facilitators who are dispersed and partnering with local guide companies. In terms of our core programming, we offer three main services, a manager series, team workshops, and outdoor business development conferences. Across the programs, margins are around 35 to 50%. Because we believe in long-term skill integration, we feed all of those programs into the Step Outside Collaborative. The Collaborative is a membership model that drives recurring revenue by giving individuals and teams access to small group coaching, individual coaching, and tight-knit community events so that they can continue practicing the emotional skills that they need. If we're gonna be in the business of long-term organizational change, ongoing practice is needed to get there. In terms of competition, we serve two core business needs, professional learning and team building. On the professional learning front, we provide a more dynamic learning environment than offices, uh, and we also deliver ongoing support. In addition to the short-term morale boosts offered by team building activities, we focus on skills that develop people professionally and personally. So far, we've had a number of outdoor workshops, conferences, and community events. Our NPS for the outdoor conferences is an 82 with more than 30% response rate. And right now, we're focused on micro hikes throughout South By. We're partnering with Outdoor Voices and Be Local Texas on those. We've got the manager series launching in another month or two, and we just signed a workshop with a small team at Meta uh, to do at the end of this month. Right now, what we're looking for is some sales expertise to optimize lead generation in our sales funnel, and we'd love to have advisors who can help us determine the feasibility of an angel round. Thanks, and looking forward to your feedback and questions. You've now got five minutes with the judges. Thanks. Hello, thank you for the pitch. Curious to understand more of why you're starting at that 20 to 500 people company size versus maybe larger corporate that might have bigger budgets. Really great question. Uh, the reason is mostly because those huge companies have internal training and development department, departments built out. And so a lot of that is done in house. When we're looking at startups and mid-sized companies, they often don't have the bandwidth or resources for those quite yet. Uh, and so that's why we're really targeting the teams that need the most help initially, but don't yet have the internal resources to build it. Go ahead. 
piggyback on Amy Joe's question there. So who's who's typically the buyer in, in these? Is it varied? Is it strictly HR? Are you going directly to like team management? Yeah, it's a really good question. Uh, at the risk of this being unhelpful, it really depends. Uh, as maybe some of y'all know, in some organizations, there's a lot of empowerment for managers to just decide what their team needs, and they'll just like run it by and get it checked off and it gets approved. In a lot of other cases, uh, there are leaders, whether it's HR or people officers, who are gonna have to make those decisions and do the approving of, of those purchases. Mark, can you discuss your go-to-market strategy? How are you finding these people and how are you getting them engaged? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that has been a trial uh, that's been going on for a while. We started out experimenting with outdoor co-working days. Um, that was effective, but not like fiscally viable, uh, which is what, that's kind of how the outdoor conferences came to be. Um, philosophically, I really believe in the idea of providing value first. So we're moving really quickly into like, what kind of free community events can we offer and bring people to those. Um, we're being targeted about who we do the, that outreach to, um, but I think across the board, the, the strategy is provide value first and then see if it converts. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Hey, Mark, good job. Are you only in Austin now? Yeah, so we're able to travel and facilitate elsewhere. That will just incur the additional travel costs to work with teams. Uh, but Austin is just booming, and so many people are moving in that it seems like a very logical place to prove the model and then thoughtfully expand beyond that. Okay, and you also mentioned that you were hiring sales agents. So how, how do you sign up? Is it online or you get... Say, that, say the last part again. Up. How do you sign up for the service? Yeah, so the service is coming through, uh, signing up through the website and through outreach, and we put them through like a, a four-step, uh, ooh, I didn't realize it was going there, sorry. Uh, I was clicking the button. Um, we put them through right now like a four-step process, and that's really where I want the kind of advising and expertise of a salesperson to help me really distill what the best, uh, what the best sales funnel and process looks like. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Any really other questions? Time. All right. Mark, thank you. Thanks. All right. Great job. Uh, next up, we will learn about Cineva from Mariana Muntin talking about unlocking game creation. So Mariana, come on up. <laughs> Good luck. Where's the click? All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. So um, who makes video games? It's the creatives, it's not the engineers, it's not the game developers, and it's not the coders and the programmers. Iconic titles like Mario and Zelda were built by people that never touched one line of code. One of them is this guy here. Um, Miyamoto is the guy that started with uh, designing toys and then went ahead and uh, designed a little concept art and then became a developer. Creativity is where everything started, and that's where it's going. So the entire industry is built for hardcore developers. So who is boxed out is the creatives, right? Because they can't code. 99.9% .9 of people that try today to build a game fail. That means only 0.1% actually succeed because of the complex, outdated, and closed frameworks. That's how we can describe today the tools that are horrible to you that don't solve the problem because creativity and creatives think differently. So because of that, and I know this, because I'm a game developer, but I'm also an artist, and my only mission is to unlock game creation to the entire world. And we made it ridiculously easy to start. So you start with side scroller, for example, you pick a character, skills, and ta-da, you play test your game. And that's not even it. That's not all that's interesting. What's 
interesting is that we have nailed mechanics that bring characters to life without one line of code. Do you know how hard this is? It's pretty hard. So if I want to make a game, a platformer, or a visual novel, doesn't matter, and I want every single character to be jumping and doing something like Steve Aoki, I can do that. Is that crazy? I don't know. Is that cool? Of course it is. Is it going to make money? You bet. We made a marketplace that leverages fiat and crypto so you can succeed in, this, in today's world. You don't have to hire a game developer. You don't have to hire an animator. You just, in browser, animate and create. So who is it for? There's 30 million of video game developers out there, if I haven't mentioned, and that's one of them is Lucy. Lucy Baldock is from Manchester, and she is dreaming about building a game on, based on a book about the visual novel of how to become the richest man in Babylon. She wants to teach people about time management. She wants to have an MVP and sell it to Fidelity. For Lucy? For Lucy. She has an MVP in minutes and a platform that scales to millions. How do we make money? Easy. 20% transaction fees that stops and that's still cheaper than everybody else. Uh, team access is subscriptions based and cloud services. We are, we, we've studied the market. We've been all over the place. There's this professional tools, the elites, and then there's Canva, which is pretty cool. I love it. And there's us. And we, by 2026, will deliver 10 million overall users on our platform, 1 million paying users that already paying $300 per year for tools that are so scattered and not solving what they need to do, just by leveraging, leveraging those existing tools and existing users, that will generate nine-figure revenue. So why our team is the best? Well, by now, I uh, haven't introduced myself. Um, I skipped it, but my name is Mariana Mantin. I have a little nerves. Um, and I'm the CEO of Cineva. I pre prior to this, I was in marketing and I was running user-based campaigns and I grew uh, user base from zero to a million. Uh, so I can say, I can call myself um, user-based a uh, user-based uh, virality, and I met a mastermind who makes things uh, really easy, and we couldn't do without a person that's obsessed with Polish for Indie, has titles, and we have Patrick Pryor at um, Unity and Disney. We're gonna go back there uh, later. I need to be done in 15 seconds. So we have paid partnerships and pilots, uh, we have been testing with thousands of users and growing our community. We are going to scale to by bringing evangelist programs and closing the round. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Nice job, Mariana. You did great. Thank you. And now you've got five minutes with the judges. Let's, let's do it. Hi. Hey, Marina, if I wanted to go and check out your product today, where will we find it? Uh, it's on upvioflow.com. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's a CMS, and we're bringing, in a couple of weeks, we're bringing the smartest engine in the world that paint and adjusts to your paint style. How do you plan on marketing it? I'm sorry? How do you plan to market so that these creatives find it as an opportunity? Yeah, I... The best thing about marketing is um, we're bringing a community together and we have started having that. We have a list of 10,000 10, on the waiting list as well as a Discord community that's growing 10% weekly and people love it and they keep coming and coming. It's something that um, it's easy adoption. So Reddit, uh, evangelist programs, people take the demos, user cases, and they show it in education, at GDC, at conferences, and there's, a, there's an enormous adoption here once we get live. Yep. I'm very curious about your target market. I'm not a gamer. I wish I were. I wish I was any good at coding. I'm not. How would somebody like me get involved, and how would you engage somebody like that? How would I engage you? 
Do you want to, what book do you like? I pick one. Let's say Snow Crash. Let's say you want to uh, build a game based on that book. Mm -hmm. You come to the platform and you select the character and then you adjust the skins. The skins are the clothes. Right. And then you put it in the scene and you don't have to look for those assets on online or offline. You just find it here. And if you are a creator and you like, don't like what we have, you can also make it right in that place. And what you can also do, you can click publish and it's done. It's in browser, it's web-based. So you don't have to pay other people 15 or 20 or hundreds of thousands of dollars to show you how to do it on iOS or Android or any other platform. It's right here for you. Interesting. Thank you. And then you can output it, share it with your friends, bring your dog into the, the, the scene. Whatever you want, you can adjust. And that's the future. Very cool. Mariana, that was great. I can feel your passion, your healthy <laughs> obsession for what you're building. So that's incredible. Um, would you ever consider white labeling the technology or doing something to inject the solution into an existing company that might already have a big engine of users? Do we consider it, uh, what kind like of... A, let's say a Canva or something. Um, would you ever white label or license? Yes, we, we, we're looking at that and we're working with an IP um, lawyer. Uh, we part of, I forgot to mention, we're part of Techstars. We're backed by them. Um, we get a lot of uh, support from them. We haven't gotten there yet, but we do have some AI, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning that's going to recognize patterns and be able to give you and you and everyone the possibility to be a creator and customize as much as possible. So like if I want Abby to bring her clothes into my game, I can do that, she can do it. And if I want him to play and adjust those skins into his character, it's gonna be possible. So that's, that's, that's the part that we will be able to, to patent and uh, <laughs> you did great. You did fantastic. I didn't see any nerves. Oh, thank you. Um, any questions? Anyone wants to build games? Yeah, what, what's an ask? But what can we do to help? Like, what, what are you looking for right now as you're starting to get this product out to market and grow in your community? What are we looking for? Yeah. We're looking for people to come to our Discord. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> and we, we will guide it from there. I'm sorry? What's the Discord channel? Discord is Cineva Games, Cineva.com, two Vs, two Vs. If I do this, that means it's two Vs. <laughs> There's a reason for that. And it means be someone. Question P. <laughs> Any other questions? Cineva.com, find me. I'm the, I'm the variety, so I'm, I want you guys to succeed. That's it? Mariana, good job. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Oh, yeah, I'll take it. All right. Great job. Going through them. Okay, next up, we are going to hear about Clever Five from Mario Suave. And he will be talking about connecting Wi Fi automatically. We'll find out what that means. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, everyone. Hello? What's the Wi-Fi password? Does anybody know the Wi-Fi password? You all been asking this question before. My name is Mario Soave, and I'm the founder of CleverFi. Our solution allows you to connect to Wi-Fi without having to ask, what is the Wi-Fi password ever again? Sorry, I forgot my clicker. One second. So the problem that we can all relate is connected to Wi-Fi, it's a hassle. You have to ask for the password or you have to fill out those complicated forms. On top of that, I'm sure you all have experienced slow Wi-Fi. And then Wi-Fi security is often unspoken. Our solution connects you to the most reliable and secure Wi-Fi automatically, no matter where you go. And I imagine, you're just traveling to Mexico on a business trip. And now the limousine or car service have Wi-Fi. So you'll be able to open your laptop and connect automatically. Again, when you get into the hotel room, connect automatically. And then again, at the restaurant reservation, at dinner, 
automatically because Cleverfy connects you once and forever. The user experience is pretty simple. All you gotta do is to register, register to our service. We provide to you your Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi name and password. And that doesn't mean that you need to carry anything around with you. This is for you to have on your journey. Then the businesses have allowed access to Cleverfy on their router. And this is a very simple step. It's like uh, connecting an Alexa to your home. The opportunity, like everyone say, it's huge. It's a $20 billion market, but it's projected to double in the next five years. And just so that you all know, there are more Wi-Fi devices than all the human being, all the cars, and all the home being built in the world. Our go-to-market is very simple. We are currently partnering up with the player, the top player in the hospitality and the automotive industry. And in the future, we can license our patent-granted technology to internet service provider and Wi-Fi vendor. In 2021, we launch in New York City. We launch a pilot in beta in one Airbnb, one cafe, and one restaurant to, to ask our customer or our user what they like and what they don't like to create a better product for them. Our business model is simple. We're a software as a service company. At launch, we'll give it out for free for all the user. We're also giving it out for free for very small business. They only have one location, but from if they have more than one location, the service costs $99 per year. And of course, we'll have enterprise, uh, um, enterprise deal as well. In 2022, currently, we're launching, our traction is with Rideshare and Limousine. It's with Boutique Hotel and with Vehicle Charge Stations. We have some competitor that hopefully will turn into partner. Stay5, for instance, is a competitor that requires you to put your email address every time you want to connect to Wi-Fi. So I've, as I'm traveling with my kids, I have to do the same operation for my daughter to connect her on her iPad. It's very annoying. Open roaming is a secure technology, but it requires people to install a certificate on their device, so it's not easy to use. I'm the founder. Uh, I work at, at, as a C-level for a software as a service company that raised $50 million. And I've also installed Wi-Fi for New York Fashion Week. My co-founder, Fernando, he digitalized 50 million driver's license for the Argentinian government. We're seeking 750K for the next 18 months to launch all of the pilot that I described to support them. So I need to hire sales, product, and team, expand my current team to accelerate our growth and for distribution and partnership. Also, if you know anybody in the hospitality or Wi-Fi industry, please reach out to me. Thank you, and please join me to revolutionize how we connect to Wi-Fi. Thank you. OK. Perfect timing, a little early. Thank you so much. Now you've got five minutes for Q&A with the judges. Thank you. Mario, are you giving away the Wi-Fi routers, or are you actually selling them? No. So in fact, we can tap into the existing infrastructure, so there is nothing that needs to be shipped unless they want to upgrade their router to a better router. We will not sell them directly. We will point them to partners, like Dell, for instance, to buy hardware. Good call. Thanks. And if nobody has a question, I have a question, right? I have a question. I'm thinking about the WIF phone, the what's in it for me as a business. Yes. Uh, and also, what is the process in, in getting this set up? Is there traffic, a lot of uh, friction, or no. what's, what's involved? Why, so the, why the, would a business do this? So for you, number one, it's very convenient. Once you register once, then you can use it everywhere you go. And number two, there is a security component, because now you have your own personal Wi-Fi with your own personal password that follows you where you go. That way, nobody can hack into your devices. And on top of this, it, it works similar to your home. You know, when people come to your home and they've been to your home, when they return, they connect automatically. So anyone traveling with you will connect automatically. So as you're going from one restaurant to a cafe, to an Uber, to a restaurant, 
everyone on your, on your party will connect automatically. So you all get the benefit of using Cleverify. Can you tell me a little bit more about how your, uh, this, this platform integrates with existing hardware infrastructure? Yes. So there is such a thing as an app store for routers. So like Cisco and all of these big players, they have the ability for third-party developer to develop solution that can be put inside the router. So that's exactly what we're building. Our system works for you without needing to download any app, without needing to download anything. It will work just like your home. You just connect automatically. And our software gets installed in this router thanks to this marketplace that the router manufacturer has created for us. Very smart question, by the way. And then maybe I'll ask you, who wants to have a seamless experience with their Wi-Fi that always works? Ooh. OK, market validation. Any more questions? Judges, no? Any burning questions from audience members for Mario? No? OK. Well, you did a great job. Thank great you. presentation. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much for your time. We are just moving right through them here. We're doing great. Okay, we have one more startup that we'll be pitching to our judges before they deliberate. So at this time, I'm going to bring up Catherine Webb from Intuili. She's going to talk about giving healthcare a personality. It's possible. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. I'm like a toddler with a cup of coffee and a new puppy. My name is Catherine Webb. I'm co-founder of Intuli, like your intuition. And we are a launching pad to help you build better relationships between patients and practitioners. Oh, thank you. Shh, thank you. <laughs> Two years ago, before the lockdown, I was pregnant and on our fifth OBGYN. And I had researched the heck out of those first four OBGYNs. I knew what school they went to. I knew where they partied and who they partied with at those schools, but I didn't know them. And when I met them in the office, I realized we didn't click. There was no connection there. I didn't have that trust factor. And that trust factor is so important, especially when you're having a baby. Good thing I found Dr. Campaign because I ended up having an undiagnosed illness, an emergency C-section, and spent $15,000 more in care costs. And hey, my slides are working. Thank you so much for that. And what it really comes down to is patients want that trusted relationship with their practitioner, especially coming out of the pandemic, as we're looking to our holistic well-being, our social, our emotional, our mental health, not just our physical health and being a transaction in this complicated healthcare system with its inherent biases and also increasing costs. And we don't have that trust in the system right now. You're finding that minorities and women, in particular, are struggling with higher rates of misdiagnoses, delayed diagnoses, and undiagnosed conditions. And people really want to have that security, that confidence in the healthcare system. And that really starts with the practitioner relationship. What we're finding is that people are wanting to be in the driver's seat for their health care, and that they're willing to pay for this trusted partner, this expert along the way. They're willing to pay $45 to $75 for that trust relationship with an OBGYN, a pediatrician, a primary care physician. As we move away from a consumer-centric marketplace model into a B2B model where we can organically source patients and practitioners, we're working with the University of Texas Venture Labs Accelerator Program. MBAs and PhDs are working on our market analysis for us and our pricing analysis. And that total available market they've quantified so far is huge. Our qualitative research is telling us that solving this trust gap, this trust problem, goes beyond just the increasing costs and the... The increasing costs and decreasing help. What we're finding is that this is also a solution for diversity, equity, and inclusion, attracting and retaining employees and reducing the risk in portfolios. Right now, most competitors are on the back end of this complicated healthcare system, fixing those back end problems. Fewer on the front lines addressing this human factor. And Thule is looking at this from the human relationship. 
And people playing in the space trying to solve that trust gap are looking at it from training programs, consulting services, glorified online search. This is why Intuli is introducing a matching service to help you find the right practitioner for you using personality psychology and dating science. If you can get married using a dating app now, you should be able to find the right practitioner for yourself. So we've taken the personality assessments and we put them into a game format. You play Exploring Mars or Discovering Atlantis, and in three minutes you get your personality results, and you also get your match results because the practitioners have also played this game. Then you're able to refine your match results based upon your cultural needs, LGBTQ plus supportive, or your service needs, herbal plant medicine friendly. And we've designed this so that we can also aggregate that data and help those companies improve their care practice, their practitioner performance, and their marketing. Our go-to-market strategy is to look at direct sales tactics, strategic partnerships and alliances with trade associations. And our brand awareness strategy is a women's wellness digital community, please join, and also content marketing. We're starting off phase one as B2B pivot with a nonprofit healthcare system here in Austin, Excess Healthcare, and we're learning from other organizations how we can design this service better as we look to scale. We have a very diverse team with a deep background, healthcare startups, as well as healthcare industry. We're excited about this opportunity because we each have also personally experienced this trust gap problem, causing detrimental effects to our families. We're excited about this solution because it's been a long time coming. We now have the advancements in technology, in science, and we all in this room have the imperative, the imperative to do better. Better human connections resulting in better outcomes for your family and mine. I want to thank Zell for hosting this. Thank you very much. We'll take questions. Great job. High five for COVID baby. Yeah. 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 Yes. Congratulations. And a round of applause for having a baby during COVID, too. Um, okay, you have five minutes with the judges. Thank you so much. Well, just first of all, I can tell you're a mom for one reason. You dealt with diversity and uh, adversity without any problem at all. You handled it. So good for you. I thought Thank it was a great you. pitch. Tell me a little about your go-to-market strategy. You're going after some nonprofits, but literally doing personality matching with doctors seems a little difficult on the doctor side. Absolutely. So in our conversations with Austin Regional Clinic, we learned that that will be the biggest hurdle is that doctor adoption, right? And one of the reasons why we've gone to this B2B format instead of the marketplace is that way they only have to pay a three-minute game. They don't have to fill out their profile. That's why we're going up market and looking at larger provider organizations where they have office staff to do that for them, right? And then we have SD kits to be able to download that into our database and automatically fill out their profile for them going forward. Thank you for the question. More of a comment and a little bit of a question here. Um, when you mentioned this is basically a dating app, but for physicians matching with their patients, we all just went. So note, note to that, bring that soon in the pitch because we're going to get it. Um, is there a role for insurance companies in here? Absolutely. That's a harder nut to crack. So someone that you might have seen on my team slide is Stephen Chapman. He has diverse experience across being an ER director in a Chicago hospital to working with the Blues, Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? And also being a consultant with PwC. And we know that going to that insurance side first is going to be an uphill battle. So we want to, as Tiana mentioned in her pitch earlier, make sure that we're building, measuring, learning, knocking down those bowling pins, as I learned from Martine and Founders Institute, before we get to that more complicated market. We're also seeing that from the analysis that those PhD and MBA students at University of Texas are doing for us, too. Thank you. Well done. Well done, Catherine. Uh, on the other Thank one. you. What, what, what are you currently looking for right now in terms of support? Are you looking to connect with more providers on that end, or are you trying to build relationships? Uh -huh. You took the words right out of my mouth. Thank you, Martine. So we are looking for connections to providers with 10 or more practitioners who are interested in doing this pilot to innovate their care practice, provide those connections for their patients, engage their patients, and get better health outcomes, not only for their patients, but also their practitioners. They're people, too. It's got to be hard going from 15-minute appointment to 15-minute appointment to 15-minute appointment and trying to adjust their bedside manner for each one of those personalities. So if we can get them the right patients for them, we're going to increase their work satisfaction and their burnout rates, which 
have been massive considering the pandemic. So we're also making sure that this is designed for them as well. Thank you, Martine. Yeah, I definitely echo, you know, my, both of my parents as well as my fiance are all in the medical field and it's a terrible place to be right now and has been for the past two years. From the patient side, of course, being able to connect you know, with the dating apps, for example, there's a lot of misconnections that happen even when we when we think we're matching with someone on a Tinder. What do you think are kind of the strategies around that? Like they, they, if it's not perfect, like it seems like it could be a match, but then they get into the office and they're like, this doctor is crazy. What, how do we kind of <laughs> mitigate that? And you're right, that's happened to all of us, right? You're walking like, ooh, I don't know about this person. <laughs> So what we did is we designed this such that not only do you get your match on leadership style, compatibility, and communication, but we also give you coaching notes. So if you didn't have a match on those categories, we're telling you where you didn't have that match within that category, such as when you go meet your practitioner, make sure that you tell them how you want to be rewarded when you reach a health milestone, how you want to be recognized. Because this is a two-way communication street, right? You need to be able to communicate what your needs are to that practitioner so you can get better, so they can get you in the right care plan right off the get-go. We've actually talked to a therapist who say that it takes them four or five sessions with a patient, and then they realize, wait, this person finally opened up to me, and if they had opened up to me in the beginning, I would have taken a completely different tack with the therapy. So it's just as important from that standpoint. Thank you for the question. No question, great job, I love your energy and Thank great you. story too. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody. Great Thank job. you. Yeah. Great job, Catherine, great idea. How about one more round of applause for all of our startups who pitched today? Yeah, everyone did such a fantastic job. And I do not envy the job now that the judges have, because this is where it gets really difficult. Again, we're talking about $15,000 for the first place winner, $10,000 for the second. So a lot is riding on this. At this time, we are going to take another fairly short break, about 15 minutes. We're going to give the judges some time to deliberate, get together, talk about this. And when we come back, we will announce the winner. So go get a bite, grab a quick drink, mingle, enjoy the activations, and we'll be back here in just a bit.